Hi, I'm Dylan from RL Detman, and today I'm going to walk you through a one-year maintenance kit on an Airco Benchmark boiler. First, I want to show you what all comes in the maintenance kit box. Um, we get a, a detailed instruction manual that walks you through everything step by step. And as you can see on the manual, this kit is good for everything from the Benchmark 1.5, the slightly older models, to the current models of the 750 all the way up to the 3000. Uh, the only benchmark models that this does not cover is the Benchmark 5000 and the Benchmark 6000. With that being said, what we have in the box is a replacement flame sensor, typical flame rod. Then there's a replacement fan jet igniter that has a pilot tube and where the spark ignition happens and the pilot lights. And from the pilot, it lights the main burner. Uh, with the flame, fan jet igniter, they send three clocking washers, which we'll get into in the in the uh, video a little later. That is for positioning the fan jet igniter in the right direction, and they show you in the manual for each model which direction they want it pointed. There's also a small tube of NICs, which you can use very sparingly on the uh, fan jet igniter. Then the last thing they have are is an O-ring and a rubber stopper for the condensate trap which generally the, the larger disc is not used in the current models. They still send one for the older models if you have the larger metal ball float. And the top is just for the O-ring for the condensate trap. With that being said, we'll get into the maintenance and I will show you where each of these components go. Before you start working on any kind of boiler, you wanna make sure it's locked out, tagged out for safety. You wanna make sure you shut off main power, and lock it out. You don't want anybody turning it on while you're working on it. You also want to make sure you isolate your gas. Our main valve is up here. And we will go to the back side and also shut off supply and return water. The flame sensor, the uh, plug just pulls off and you can set it aside. Just got two Phillips screws holding it in. And the screw holes are offset so you cannot put this in backwards. There is a small compressed gasket underneath the sensor to keep it sealed. So once you get, get it out, it should, once you break that gasket free, the flame sensor will pull out. You can see there's some buildup on there. Um, we'll replace it once we put everything back together and then we'll, we'll clean this one up and keep it as a spare. The igniter injector, the gas line comes in and there's a a 7 sixteenths compression fitting on here that just break free all right once we get that compression free set the the uh, solenoid aside the spark wire just pops off also set that aside and the the igniter itself has a one inch nut or a one inch wrench to fit it. Break that free and it, generally they come out pretty easy once you break them free. Just gonna pull it out gently so you can inspect it and check its condition. And this is where the clocking washers will go when we when we go to replace it with a new one. We'll, Make sure it's pointing in the right direction. With the igniter, um, I mentioned earlier that it has these clocking washers that comes with it. So what you want to do is, with no washers on there, put it in and see where it stops. If you look in the manual, it'll show you the direction they want it pointing. If you if you draw a line from the gas intake tube to the spark probe, right now we're pointing straight out this way towards the back of the unit. The manual will show you, you want it pointing, they give you 120 degrees, they, they'll show you a good diagram in there, they want it pointing almost towards the sight glass here, the observation port. But since we're about 90 degrees off where it stops, we we'll want to take it off and add one clocking washer because one clocking washer will stop us at about 90 degrees from where we were. If you need to go 180 degrees, you would use two clocking washers. If you need to go three quarters of a turn, you would use all three. 
Now we got one clocking washer in. It should stop pretty close to where they wanted it. There. Now our, our gas intake tube and our spark are all pointing towards the observation port. That's pretty close to where they want it. We'll snug that down with our one inch wrench. Then we have a new ferrule for our compression for our gas. And get our solenoid on there and start the compression fitting. I'm gonna make sure that it stays pushed down all the way. started yeah make sure it's, it's bottomed out inside of that compression fitting so that when we tighten it the ferrule clamps down on that pilot tube there that finger tight and we'll take our 7 16 and snug it to tighten that ferrule snug there pop on our ignition wire pushes on. Then we all have our, our new flame sensor. Um, again with the igniter and the flame sensor we'll, we'll clean up the old ones with a, like a 3M uh, Brillo pad, Scotch-Brite pad, clean it up and keep them for emergency spares but with a two-year kit it comes with new ones so we will replace them. And again I told you before that these uh, screw holes are offset so you can't put it in backwards. You can see there the holes are one's closer to the rod and the other's not. We'll just put that in there and get the two screws going. And just snug those down because it's got that uh, gasket in there that will compress a little bit. You don't want to over tighten it and get it really compressed. Okay, good. All right, so we got our two screws going in. So we just want to snug them. We don't want to over tighten them and compress that pad too much. Just good and snug. Keep a seal. And we got our sensor wire. It clicks on pretty good. It's on there good and snug. To get into the air filter, it's just held on with a clamp, typical hose clamp. Loosen that and it falls right off. These filters are made by KNN, so they are cleanable with a KNN air filter kit. They should last a long time. I believe they're recommended replaced every couple of years, but as long as you take care of them, they will last a good long time. The basic process when cleaning the Canon air filters is if you have their kit, which they sell at any, any auto supply store, they have a cleaner and they also have a lubricant. You want to take the cleaner and spray down the entire filter, saturate it completely with the cleaner. Um, doesn't hurt to let it sit for a little while, but then from there you can take it to a slop sink or a mop sink and completely rinse it with hot water, get it completely clean. Then you wanna make sure that before you go to re-oil it with the oil, you have to let it dry completely. So you gotta make sure you put it in front of a fan, either overnight or somewhere it's gonna completely dry before you oil it. Once it's completely clean, you just take the oil and spray a nice even coat until the entire filter is a nice light pink. So this is the filter after it's been washed. We use the cleaner and then we hose it off and let it dry for a while. Um, this is the Canon air filter oil. You want to just take and get a nice even coating over the whole filter. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it should leave a nice light red, almost pink color. You want to try to get it straight into all the crevices so you get as much surface area of the filter as you can covered with the soil. This will help trap the smaller, smaller contaminants that we don't want in the boiler. Make sure you get a good, generous coating on it. So I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it's got a nice, nice pink tint to it now. When it was dirty, it was almost black. That was just all the dirt and stuff that soaked in. So from there, we'll just go put it back on with our 5 sixteenths, and that is it. Sorry. Good. <laughs> Good. All right, so our next step is cleaning the condensate trap. So 
got four thumb screws here to take the lid off. And the newer traps do have a, a clear glass top or plastic top so you can see through and see if the water's backing up or not. If it's backing up and touching the top of the glass or the plastic, you know that the restriction is downstream from here. But you just pop off your lid. There's this O-ring here that comes out. This one was broken. Um, what I generally do is there's there's a little plastic float ball in here, which does get corroded up. So you're going to definitely want to clean that. I generally just use Simple Green. Spray it down and wipe it down good with paper towels. At the same time, spray down the trap because we're going to clean that out with towels as well. Get as much of the grime and stuff off of here because if you get enough stuff on there it can cause the, tr the ball to stick to the bottom. So that's cleaned up. It's still a little stained but you want to make sure it's doesn't have any holes in it to where it's filling up with water and not floating like it should. We'll leave that aside for now. We can spray down the trap really good to get it cleaned out. Reach in as far as you can. Sometimes you use a screwdriver to get in there good and run the paper towels around and get them cleaned out. Sort of work at it and get as much of it out of there as you can. Clean off the top. That way you can get a good seal with your O-ring. At this point, this is where they send the larger disc. That was used on the older style that they used to use a, a larger metal ball float instead of the plastic. They generally don't ship with the disc anymore, but they ship the maintenance kit with it just in case you're using that. Um, other than that, you just drop your ball back in, take your new O-ring gasket, should set right in place, in your lid so you can see through it. back in and put the four screws in. All right, after we clean the uh, trap, most boilers, especially in Michigan, uh, it's code to have an acid neutralizer. Uh, this is the brand that Detman supplies from BKI Industries. It's basically just a holding tank with, a, with some limestone, specific limestone rocks in it that will neutralize the acidic condensate before it goes down a drain. Generally what you'd want to do is spray it down with simple green, you know, if the rocks are slimy, gross, or you could even cut it out and bring it to a slop sink and empty it, refill it with brand new rocks if you want after you clean it. Again, just make sure it's not slimy and gross and building up water back up. Uh, however you choose to do it, whether you take it to a sink and empty it and put brand new filler in it or clean it and refill it with what was in there and then just top it off with new. This concludes our one year maintenance on a typical Airco Benchmark boiler. Um, if you have any questions on part numbers or how to order the maintenance kits, feel free to call our office at RL Detman and talk to any of our customer service reps and they will be able to help you and get kits ordered for you. Thank you.